Hey guys, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the Japanese destroyers. This will be the first video for the specific ships, and of course that means that this is the Tier 2 Umikaze class of destroyers. There were two of these ships that were completed in the early 1900s, the Umikaze, which means Sea Wind, and Yamakaze, which means Mountain Wind, and both serve until 1930 in some form. The Umikaze-class destroyer was designed after the Russo-Japanese War and was designed primarily to improve the ocean-going capabilities of their destroyer fleet. The design was heavily influenced by the Royal Navy's tribal class of destroyers, and these ships would be three times larger in terms of displacement compared to Japan's previous destroyer classes. They featured the first steam turbine engines of any Japanese ship and pushed the capabilities of Japan's naval designers to the limits. They also proved to be extremely fuel-hungry and had some of their oil boilers converted back to coal to improve efficiency, and in spite of all of this, they remained in limited use throughout the, their entire service life. Umikaze and Yamakaze were both utilized primarily for coastal patrol duties and remained in service, like I said, until 1930. In 1930, both destroyers would be converted to minesweepers and then eventually sold for scrap and broken up in 1936. The good news is that in-game we don't have to worry about fuel efficiency or sea keeping, but instead what we get is by far one of the most fun-to-play ships in the game. She relies heavily on her torpedoes to inflict devastating damage on her targets, and while that is a strength of the Japanese, it is by no means their only strength as a destroyer class. The Umikazes have a very low detection range, and for their tier of very high speed, as well as being very maneuverable, and this makes for just an absolute riot of a ship to play. You can really use that those traits to launch devastating attacks. I mean, it's it's incredible. You can charge torp, you can stealth torp, because you've got 8-kilometer uh, torpedoes, and they do a fairly decent amount of damage for their range. The ship is maneuverable enough that you can do those charging torpedo attacks with quick kickover of the rudder and, and avoid incoming fire. And the torpedo reload comes up so quick, it, it's almost hilarious how many torpedoes you can put in the water. I... I do enjoy playing this ship a lot, and, and it does give you a very good introduction into the basics of using torpedoes. If you've never played a ship that relies on torpedoes like the Japanese destroyer lines do, the Umikaze is a fantastic trainer. Of course, if you have the Kamikaze or Kamikaze R or Fujin, those would probably be better boats to practice in, simply because the ships that you're going to be facing off against are going to be more lethal, and the players have a little bit better idea of what's going on. In fact, this battle video that I'm going to show you, it's a really high damage number, especially for a Tier 2 fight. It's by no means representative of the average capabilities of the ship by any stretch of the imagination, but it does show what happens when you do have a lot of experience with torpedoes and how to launch them. Of course, being Tier 2 and having over 3,000 games... Um, it looks way worse than it is. It, it's definitely seal clubbing. But uh, anyway, the, the ship is a lot of fun to play, and they're, they're, by no means should anybody take that away from this uh, this destroyer. You you really have to use this ship as what it is, a, a solid foundation to build upon for the rest of your torpedo launching abilities. Like I said, the torpedoes come up quick. They're relatively slow, which means hitting with them at longer ranges can be kind of frustrating, but they have a reasonably good detection range so that you do get hits. And of course, being Tier 2, not everybody has learned the effects of WASD yet. And so you do get torpedo hits more frequently. And with that low detection range, it's very easy to get in close and launch them from very close ranges. But enough talking about that. Let's dive right on into those stats then. For hit points, she has 10,300. Next to no armor, it's a destroyer. It has literally one inch of armor at its thickest locations. The main battery consists of 320 millimeter guns. They have a firing range of 6.7 kilometers. You're not going to be setting any distance records with the guns on these on the ship. That said, the guns do exist, guys. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that completely ignore the guns on Japanese destroyers, and I think you're doing it wrong. And I'll talk more about that in the battle video. 
The torpedoes, you have two dual launchers. They have an 8-kilometer range, 48 knot top speed. The detection range is 0.8 kilometers, and they do 6,800 damage for each one that hits. They also reload in a very fast 24 seconds. You are shooting torpedoes out, four of them, faster than battleships are, and you will see battleships in a Tier 2 ship. You will start to see the South Carolina and a Sal. You'll see Mikasa all the time. Um, and so, it, you know, you've got a very, very good torpedo armament to work with there. It does have one 40 millimeter anti aircraft. Sorry, it has two single anti aircraft mounts. Uh, they're both 40 millimeters. I'm kind of curious to see what they look like. That's pretty fascinating. All right. Uh, max speed, 33 knots. Turning circle is 540 meters. The rudder shift is 2.7 seconds, which is very quick. Her detection range by sea is 5.4 kilometers, and that is without Concealment Expert. And the detection range by air is 2.9 kilometers, again, without Concealment Expert. In terms of modules, there's really only one module that's really worth taking right now at this point, and that's Main Armaments Mod 1 which reduces the chance of your main battery being incapacitated by 20%, increases the main battery survivability by 50%, decreases the time it takes to repair incapacitated main batteries by 20%. It also, and this is the more important part of this, reduces the chances of your torpedo tubes of becoming incapacitated by 20%, increases their hit points by 50%, and decreases the repair time by 20%. So that's a very, very powerful skill. Combine that with preventative maintenance on the captain skills and you make for very difficult armament to take out, which makes, you know, th these ships a lot of fun to play. So let's go ahead and let's dive on into that battle video and we'll talk more about the gameplay style in that battle video. Okie dokie. So being as this is a ship that relies on torpedoes, I feel obligated to talk about some common sense things with torpedoes. Yes, this is a tier two, tier three fight. With torpedoes, we definitely need to make sure that before we launch them that there are no friendlies that they are going to hit. You have an eight kilometer range on your torpedoes and you need to clear eight kilometers in the direction that they're traveling. Furthermore, the torpedoes on this ship go a whopping 48 knots, which is about as fast as the Sims torpedoes, which are frequently called sea mines. So they don't move very quickly. It is very difficult to get full 8k torpedo hits on targets with this ship. However, it is possible, and it is also possible that when you launch torpedoes, by the time they get somewhere, you could technically have a friend that decides... I like torpedoes. Torpedoes are my friend. There is no such thing as a friendly torpedo. So please, 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 when you launch torpedoes, check your mini-map, give a good look around, be safe when launching them so that your friendlies don't have to make maneuvers to avoid them. If you do launch torpedoes and they are headed in the path of a friendly, please, please tell them. Get them to move out of the way. Okay, so the next part about torpedoes that we need to talk about is how and when to launch them and where to launch them. Well, you have this handy dandy little guide indicator, and I plan on doing a full separate video on this later. But, you have this white line that's going to pop up when you have a, a target selected and you're in your torpedoes. Right now we don't have it, you can see we have the green arc, which is our firing arc, and then the, the narrower green cone, that is where the torpedoes are going to go. You have wide and you have narrow. If you press three twice, you'll get you'll change from just torpedoes to uh, from the widespread to narrow spread or narrow spread to widespread, depending on what's selected. Uh, we'll cover this in a bit, but there are certain parts of maps. For instance, you saw me launch torpedoes at the beginning of this. Uh, there are certain places that are just frequent flyers for ships to come through. And especially on this map at the very early part of the game, it's very easy to launch torpedoes into these opening two channels and get hits. As we are about to see, it, it happens frequently enough that I just do it. And with how fast the reload comes up on these torps, there's really no downside to doing it. Also, you okay, so you can see the white line that was moving there. 
That line is extremely useful for a number of different purposes. One of the biggest one is predicting where a ship is going to be. I mean, that's it's really its original intent. There we got a torpedo hit on that Samson. And those torpedoes were the, the second set of torpedoes that I launched. So you can see how you, you just throw torpedoes sometimes down these channels, especially at these low tiers when the torpedo reload comes up so quickly. Um, anyway, paying attention there to the Samson. We're going to bail out of the smoke because torpedoes and smoke tend to go hand in hand. Torpedoing smoke happens all the time. Um, that indicator, when it pops up, that indicator is saying that in an ideal world, if nothing changes, this is where the target will be when your torpedoes reach their line of travel. The problem with that indicator is that it doesn't tell you where they will be when they are maneuvering. At least it doesn't tell you accurately where they will be when they're maneuvering. You can see there that our torpedoes almost hit that Samson a second time. Uh, they move so slow, they have such a low detection range. Oh, we got a whole slew of torpedoes, and at this point I'm thinking, I could very well be dead. How far away was that Samson again? I think they're going to run out, but we're not going to take any chances. Anyway, going back to that torpedo lead indicator. The torpedo lead indicator is a good suggestion of where to aim. However, if that indicator is moving at all from its location, that means they are maneuvering, which means you need to think about the long term. Okay, so in a minute when my torpedoes finally get to the target, where is that target going to be? And you can look on the minimap. You can compare your relative angles to the target that you're you're trying to launch torpedoes against, and you can figure out roughly where that ship is going to be and put torpedoes there. I've demonstrated this before in other uh, videos, especially my Shimikaze videos, although I did it in a Minikaze video. I torpedoed a aggressively maneuvering Cleveland. I think it was twice, if not three times. And all it takes is just a little bit of intuition based on where they're at. So, for instance, the, this Koenig Albert, if he were to maintain his current port course, launching at the white line would be a very viable tactic. However, it is a premium ship and people who are willing to spend money on this game may or may not necessarily be the best players. However, I can reasonably assume that he's going to be maneuvering. So we launched one set very short there and the other set we launched long. Now they're shooting at me because I'm a destroyer. <laughs> And that, you know, that Wix is sitting there just lighting up the Sumikaze. We got both those torpedoes are out on that, on the, the Koenig. And, um, well, that, that, that set that we launched short isn't going to find home. But again, paying attention to where he's at, you know, he's angled towards me. We're coming towards each other. There's a high chance that he is going to actually turn out. And as a result, I want to launch those torpedoes ahead of the, the indicator or to the left of the indicator, because if he turns out, what's going to happen is, is that indicator is going to move left. And you can see how it's kind of doing that right there in that in this view. And what that means is that those torpedoes, there's a lucky hit on the South Carolina all the way in the back, not our intended target. And the Koenig is very, very angry at us, and he's about to eat three torpedoes for his troubles. And that right there is a perfect example of the reasons why we launch torpedoes the way we launch them. You always want to anticipate where the ship is going to be when the torpedoes get there. Unfortunately, that second set of torpedoes doesn't get the chance to hit, but had it gotten there, and had he not died before they gotten there, we would have gotten that kill. We have five torpedo hits, and as I said before, this game is not real... <laughs> This game isn't a real safe indicator because at the low tiers, people haven't figured out WASD. It's very easy to get a lot of torpedo hits and rack up a lot of damage if you're very familiar with torpedo gameplay, which obviously I at least have some experience in. And so as a result, this game is kind of seal clubby. It's 90,000 damage. And a large portion of that is because these, you know, these battleships don't do a whole lot in the maneuvering. Now... 
with how quick these torpedoes come up, you can see how rock steady that indicator is. And you kind of got to take a gamble. My guess is, is he's probably going to turn out when he sees these torpedoes. So we're going to get, again launch them to the left of the indicator since that's the direction he's heading. When he turns out, that means that the, the indicator will move to the left and those torpedoes will actually have hit. And had he turned in, I would have needed to launch him to the right or short, as we like to call him. There's another torpedo hit. And then they would actually hit uh, as he hit the bow of him as he turned in because the indicator would move to the right. And we'll cover this all more in depth in another video. But here is a, another three torpedo hits because we were able to successfully put those torpedoes where the ship was going to be. Again, check your surroundings. No destroyers in sight launching those torpedoes. Now, one other critical thing with the Japanese destroyers, you'll see I'm using my guns. I've been using them pretty much all match. Uh, 19 hits, they're not a huge damage contributor, especially at these low tiers. I'm not worried about the damage they do so much as the fires they start, and there is a very important fire because his damage control party is already down. This fire is going to burn for a while. And fires represent a large part of the damage dealing capabilities. Okay, so there you just repaired it. Fires represent a large capability, a large damage dealing capability of the Japanese destroyers. If you aren't using your guns, you're not starting fires, you're leaving out potentially tens of thousands of damage every game. And if you don't think that adds up, it does. It doesn't give you as much experience as, say, you know, nuking a battleship from full health to zero but it helps you win the game and this has been one of my complaints about japanese destroyer players is well we don't want to use our guns well you can see there i just did 1400 damage i'm averaging about eight i think 800 damage um per salvo there's 281 that's not a very good example but um if you use your guns, you can start these fires. These fires are going to burn for a long time. The next fire, there's another fire. Okay, so now the South Carolina, his damage control party is down. If he's not running premium consumables, it could be upwards of two minutes of, of him just burning. Now, it's not going to be a full two minutes, but, you know, it, it's one of those things where I, I just can't stress it enough. Okay, so there we saw we were launching torpedoes. You saw the direction that he is most likely to travel. He's most likely to continue try and turn in to go to B to rally up with his friends. So we're going to launch those torpedoes in accordance. Yeah, meanwhile, he continues to burn. That one fire is just racking up damage all the time. In this, we're going to actually charge him. And we're, I'm going to show you how to do the duck and wheat. Wow, that was interesting. That's not me. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you the, uh, the way you can kick the rudder over on these attacks. So he's shot at us. We kick the rudder to the right. No hits. And if you give yourself just a little bit of an angle towards him, just enough to bring all those guns to bear, anytime he tries to shoot at you, you can turn in and he is going to struggle to hit you with those. Now, down he goes. We've got two Nassau's over here that we need to take care of. This Nassau has camo. Hint, 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 hint. If it has camo, chances are he probably has been playing the game at least long enough to get uh, you know, to the, the appropriate commander or um, the profile level is what they call it. To get to the appropriate profile level to have camouflages. So with that, plan accordingly. That means he's probably got a reasonably decent understanding of WASD. He has a reasonably good understanding of accuracy of his guns. As is evidenced here by the fact that he has hit me out of four salvos three times. And, he, you know, he continues to hit me. So... There, you saw we launched the torpedoes, and here again, there is three more torpedo hits on a battleship, and 85,000 damage is where we're at, that was caused because we were able to put torpedoes where the ship will be when the torpedoes get there. Now, he is maneuvering. You can see him maneuvering. This isn't a secret. This isn't some secret order thing. He is maneuvering quite aggressively. And as a result, we need to actually plan accordingly and put the torpedoes where they will be. And I, again, I plan on covering the effects of that lead indicator. It's a really good suggestion. However, you need to use a little bit of intuition 
and map sense to actually plan accordingly. For instance, it, where that Nassau was, there was only two directions that he could turn. He could turn towards me, in towards me, so that his bow was facing towards me. He could turn out to where his stern is going to end up facing me. He is constrained by the island on his right side, and so he can only turn out a little bit. So we don't need nearly as much of a lead on him as we had on other targets in this match. And that is a, an important bit of map sense that you got to pick up to really be effective with Japanese destroyers, especially if you plan on relying solely on torpedoes. Please don't. Please don't. There are times and places where the left mouse button is very useful, Yumikaze doesn't show up, but by the time you get to Fubuki at Tier 6, the guns become very, very, very powerful. Minikaze is really kind of the last of the... Uh, I, I want to call them the, the single-barrel gun torps uh, destroyers, where they only have a, you know, a, single, a single gun mount, and there's a whole bunch of them. There's four of them on Minikaze. Um, it's really the last one of those that of these types of ships where the guns are kind of short-ranged and really not terribly useful for anything. Again, you're not looking at just doing the damage for the actual HE damage so much as you are for the fires on capital ships. Uh, it, they do work really well for contesting caps. We didn't really have a good cap contesting portion of this video, and I will cover this in more in depth, but when it comes to contesting caps in a Japanese destroyer, you need to plan your escape route, and you need to be in position to escape as early as possible. So at the beginning of this map, we remained in cover. You can see where my, my division mate is there in yellow and the north side of the B cap. I came in at that area, I gave myself plenty of room to just accelerate straight out and, and get away from the cap, and it's that kind of thinking ahead that comes from a lot of battleship gameplay, interestingly enough, that uh, you it's that required level that you need to, to successfully contest caps. The other thing is, is you need good support. Your guns have very high HE alpha, and... That's really good for taking out destroyers. The problem is, is you have very low rate of fire and very poor turret traverse, which means that you're going to have to basically turn the ship to aim the guns. And in doing so, you need to know specifically when you can and cannot do that uh, and against what ships. Now, at the low tiers, U.S. destroyers have very flat arcs. It's the same with the Russian destroyers. And their guns are their sole source of damage. Their torpedoes are rather lackluster. And aside from doing charge torping, there's really not much use to um, getting into gun duels with them without a whole lot of support. At the later tiers, when the U.S. destroyers switch over to the 5-inch 38s and the Russian destroyers have these massive uh, ranges where they are almost always engaging at and they're hardly ever contesting caps, you can kind of take advantage of a U.S. destroyer because that those high gun arcs make it very difficult to hit. You cannot fight a U.S. destroyer in his game in a knife fight at four, you know, 5K, 4K. You need to push it out to the 8, 9K where your gun arcs, which are very flat, actually are an advantage and where your gun turret traverse isn't as big of a disadvantage. It's still going to be a disadvantage, but it's not such a disadvantage that you can't... Um, that you can't use the guns. So don't feel like you only have to use torpedoes. You can see we got 61 gun hits, three fires in this match, 90,000 damage, 12 torpedoes, six floods, high caliber and incapacitation. Only one sink, although we've, we've done more than our fair share in terms of capping points. And there we spotted that smith at the very end. But anyway, on to the end battle screen. Again, 89,313 damage, 2,256 for the XP, 1,432 base XP. Here you can see our guns did 15,790 some odd damage. There's the credit screen. Anyway, we'll cover this more in depth as we get into all the different types of destroyers, but... Again, the guns work on these ships. They're good at starting fires. You need to use them. You just need to learn when to use them. And the low tiers are a good place to experiment with that. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. You guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.